Welcome to Psychotherapy Unfogged. My name is Mark Fielding, I'm a psychotherapist and relationship counsellor and I've been in practice for somewhat over 15 years. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about COVID. So we're nine weeks, almost 10 weeks into the whole COVID situation. And I think people are handling it in their own individual ways. We all see you know, new experiences through our own, you know, our, own deep, our own lenses, the lenses of our own experience. I think people initially were perhaps attracted by the novelty. Um, I mean, often with humans, although this is somewhat of a generalisation, you know, novelty can be quite interesting. Um, things had really changed. We were kind of drawn into that. Um, our working practices have changed. We're spending more time at home. Some of us were furloughed. There was a lot going on, I think, to keep our attention. But now as time has gone on, you know, I think the initial feelings around COVID and perhaps the, you know, the focus on change and the focus on what's going on have maybe drifted away and been replaced by a feeling of loss. I think a lot of us are experiencing loss of the lives that we had before. I think a lot of us are realising that the lives we had before that perhaps we all took for granted, you know, were really great. And now, you know, because our freedoms are, you know, are changed, we can't go out as much, we can't see friends and family as much. We're really, really missing that life. And I think that life brings a lot of good feeling. You know, there's, there's a chemical a hormone called oxytocin. When we see family, when we see friends, when we hug, when we see partners, this oxytocin, you know, arises in our body. It's a feel-good chemical. We feel good. Social connections as human beings are incredibly important. Then I also notice perhaps a difference between introverts and extroverts during this crisis. I think introverts are perhaps, this is again somewhat of a generalisation, dealing with it probably a little bit better. Um, I think for people that you know are, are quite high on introversion, spending a lot of alone time doing solo pursuits or pursuits just with a small number of people, reading, watching TV, listening to podcasts, etc., etc., you know, can be can be helpful. This is the kind of life that introverts, you know, often lead. Uh, you know, too much stimulation, too much socialisation for introverts, you know, it can often be often be difficult and overwhelming. But I do know it's that uh, people that are high on extroversion are, you know, really, really suffering. I think suffering from the lack of social connectivity, um, suffering from being out, being out and about, being stimulated, seeing people, seeing friends, having novel experiences, you know, and and I think the, the, the loss narrative that we're all feeling, you know, is creating incredible feelings of sadness for us all. You know, I want to link in people with pre-existing kind of mental health conditions, perhaps people that were, you know, suffering from depression or anxiety before the crisis started. Perhaps they're feeling worse. Perhaps the collective trauma, you know, and I think that even though it seems an extreme way to describe what's going on, I think that is the right term for what's going on. You know, we're all experiencing a collective trauma. We're in the midst of it. We're trying to cope. You know, and I guess it goes without saying that people, you know, that have been experiencing anxiety, depression, you know, or, or other mental health kind of issues before are possibly going to be impacted by this extra thing that they have to deal with, you know, more. And dealing with, you know, the current situation is perhaps going to be even more difficult. I guess I want to talk about coping strategies, you know. I mean, I think it's really, really easy, especially at the start, but I think the, probably the same thing is also true now, to just give up our coping strategies. You know, finding structure within a life that has, has very much changed is pretty difficult. But I think, you know, structure and the coping strategies that a lot of us have in place, you know, either consciously or unconsciously, that keep our mental health good, keep our mental health ticking over at a really good place, you know, it's very easy to lose those. Things like social connectivity. Yeah, okay, we can't see people as much, you know, the situation, although that's that's somewhat changing in week nine, but the situation has, you know, has, has been against that. You know, we, we only see, you know, a few people. But I think connecting with others, you know, on, on Zoom, Skype, you know, remotely, I think is incredibly important. You know, remaining in touch, I think, and, you know, social connectivity as human beings is what makes us tick. And it's a massive source 
of our personal happiness. And that goes for introverts, introverts and extroverts. I guess it's just the difference is the amount, really. So, you know, I think keeping connected with people, I think, is incredibly important. You know, I mean, even the clapping on the Thursday, you know, coming out and seeing all of your neighbours and that collective spirit, I think it has been really, really helpful for people. You know, a lot of people use exercise as a coping strategy. You know, exercise for me and, you know, research also supports this, is one of the best things we can do for our mental health. It promotes well-being, you know, it changes the brain, which I won't go into now, but in positive ways. You know, neurogenesis is one of those ways when we exercise research suggests we create more neurons in the brain. Um, so it's very easy to give up exercise during the lockdown. You know, fear about going out might be playing into that. But I think if exercise has been supporting us and supporting our mental health, I think it's incredibly difficult we continue to do that. You know, whether that be exercise indoors, if perhaps you're shielding, you can't go out. There's loads of stuff online now with exercise routines. If you are able to go out, running, I think is good. Gyms are obviously closed. I think a lot of people have been using gyms, you know, to build up physical health, but, you know, the byproduct is also, you know, to, to really support mental health. I think long walks, running, just being out, I think, and taking exercise is tremendously therapeutic. You know, if that, if those walks and those runs can be in nature, a park, depending on where you live, you know, a field, I, I think that's almost like a double whammy of goodness. You know, you're pulling in the nature, but you're also taking exercise. You know, and I think it's incredibly important to, you know, to do that. Um, I mean, other coping strategies. I mean, a lot of people use journaling. You know, journaling can be a really, really helpful coping strategy, especially for people with really, really busy minds. You know, the mind will turn over and turn over and keep thinking about things. You know, a lot of people find journaling really, really helpful, just externalising all of their thoughts, putting them on paper and kind of getting them out of their mind and onto paper can be helpful. But, you know, as I say, very easy to give up these coping strategies, these things that, you know, are supporting us and helping us. You know, another one, meditation is also really good, you know, particularly good for anxiety. So easy to just give it up, you know, but with so much concentration on what's going on, you know, and, and media, just really easy just to not bother, you know. But I think it's important not to forget that these things are really, really helpful and we need to continue to do them. I guess I want to now move on to media. I think at the start, you know, at the start of the COVID situation everyone's watching media and i don't want to be idealistic and suggest that people don't watch the media because i guess we all need to be informed and know what's going on but I, what, what i would say is i think it's incredibly difficult uh, incredibly difficult incredibly important to be to be mindful of how much media we're consuming i mean i think a lot of us most of us all of us have anxiety around the situation around you know catching covid or, around lots and lots of different different things and i think watching too much media and not mindfully controlling the amount of data in terms of media coverage of the covid crisis that you're taking in i think can really really increase anxiety you know it's almost hypnotic isn't it to watch the news and just watch you know hours and hours and hours of different people you know talking about this situation in lots of different ways but I think it's important to be mindful of how much of this we're consuming because the effect is, you know, to create a lot of anxiety. And if we've already experiencing anxiety or indeed if we have an anxiety disorder, you know, this is not going to be helpful. I think sleep, sleep is obviously also really, really important. And uh, if we're furloughed and we're not working, you know, and I hear this from a lot of people, you know, it's so easy just to get out of sleep hygiene and to go to bed late and to get up, you know, to get up late. But of course, you know, sleep hygiene is really important to mental health. So I think, it's, again, it's really, really important to, to keep these good habits that, that we had, you know, that were supporting us previously going during the crisis, you know, to try and, you know, keep some kind of structure in terms of the structure that's supporting our mental health going in this time of global crisis and collective trauma. A lot of people are thinking about the future. 
there were people obviously with financial worries, worries about losing their jobs. You know, there's a lot of anxiety being created around this situation. And of course, these are real and tangible things, you know, real time, real world worries that people are worrying about. But again, I think it's important to manage the amount of airtime these worries are getting. Again, I don't want to be idealistic and suggest that we don't think about these things. You know, we don't process them. But I guess mindfulness, again, may be helpful. If these are worries that we're not actually sure what's going on, our mind's just trying to kind of create, trying to fill the gap that uncertainty is creating. I think using mindfulness to try and control our mind, I think can be really, really helpful. So we're not endlessly churning over worries and trying to fill in the gap that, you know, for all of us, the uncertainty has created. Because I think, you know, allowing your mind, you know, free range just to ruminate endlessly about these things is going to pull up a lot of anxiety. Think about them, sure. But I think managing your mind in terms of how much time you spend thinking about these things, I think is also really, really important. I mean, in terms of trauma, I guess to finish on, you know, something something positive, you know, as a therapist, I'm, you know, a really big believer in post-traumatic growth. Do you know, I've worked a lot with people with trauma over the years, and I see this a lot. You know, people that have been through incredibly difficult experiences, that have been through traumas, you know, and we're all going through a collective trauma now. Yeah, it, it's incredibly difficult over time. And it takes a lot of time to process and there are negatives, PTSD, you know, anxiety, you know, depression that can come as a result. But I do see also a spurt of personal growth when people that have experienced trauma move through, you know, the PTSD, the effects of the trauma, work through it. They come out on the other side, often really changed, their personal growth really, really accelerated, different view of the world you know, self-efficacy, really kind of, um, people feeling really empowered, taking control of lo their lives, you know, and I think this may be something that happens with all of us, you know, when we come out of this collective trauma, whenever that will be, you know, perhaps we'll be changed, but perhaps some of that change will be positive, and I think it's important to remember that. Thank you.